And here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Cult of Man. I'm Kyle. And I'm Noah. And I'm going to turn this down. And today we are uh, tackling a topic that I can only speak for myself, scares me a little bit. I know it's something that reaches into pretty much most people's lives. It's uh, something that I was raised that you don't talk about in polite company, but you do talk about in interesting, sophisticated company. And so I guess we're going to do it. So this could be a great episode. This could be the last episode. Yeah, and this no. is not something that, and we we haven't really talked about this topic a before little bit, this but episode not much. When we started rolling. Yeah. Right. And uh, so yeah, today's topic is God and religion, reason and philosophy. But I guess mostly I guess it's God because it's philosophical and or I guess And we'll theological. throw we'll throw a little so, meditation um in Yeah. There too. But I guess um Part of the reason I thought this would be a good idea, let's <laughs> see if this was a good idea, <laughs> is uh, as many of you know that uh, have listened to the podcast, uh, I personally was raised Catholic, and I do credit a lot of Catholicism along with bad parenting for many of my deep psychological scars that I'm still sort of uh, occasionally still excavating. I'll find bits and pieces of it in there. Mm -hmm. and uh, why I uh, am not a Catholic anymore and why I reject, you know, the concepts of original sin. Uh, I don't think that you are responsible for your father's sins or your ancestors' sins. So I think it's pretty evil to tell a child that you have original sin on you yeah. uh, from the dawn of time or, or whatnot. I just, I, I, that's not on you. And it's actually something that I found quite refreshing about Islam, that mm -hmm. they don't have that. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. So I've been digging in deep into the Abrahamic religions, uh, mostly Islam because it's the one I understand the least, but the one that seems to be coming up the most. That said, I am... Coming up the most in your life? Or in my life, in the media that I've followed, yeah. and certain, I don't know how I got it got into my algorithm. Maybe people that you also respect. Like, there's a lot of... Not even people I respect. I mean, I guess people I respect, but, but people who are uh, thinkers and there's there's... Uh, I guess some of the YouTubers I was following, there is an Islamic corner of the manosphere, mm -hmm. and I don't, depending on what, how familiar you are with it, uh, a lot of them I think are, are, I guess are red pill guys. Some of them are complete idiots, some of them are really interesting, and, and some of them are, like I said, scholars. So I'm kind of getting um, sort of, I guess, the best of some of the Islamic scholars in guys like Hamza Youssef, who actually is a teacher here in the United States. Zaytuna College in, is it, is it Santa Barbara or is it Davis? I can't remember where. And then a guy named Mohammed Hijab, who is uh, a sheikh out of the UK, who is a pretty brilliant guy. Mm. Um, I've never heard a religious person invoke Aristotle as much as this guy does. Really? I, yeah, I watched a conversation with him and Jordan Peterson, and I was really impressed one by his knowledge of secular ideology and philosophy, his respect for Aristotle. And I, again, I'm an Aristotelian. What is uh, that? Uh, an Aristotelian is uh, basically there's, there's been three, I guess, purely Aristotelian philosophers in history. Mm -hmm. One is Aristotle himself right. from 4,000 years ago. So he's the father of logic, basically, right. and, and reason. Then uh, you had the resurrection of Aristotelian philosophy came with Thomas Aquinas. So he was responsible for bringing reason back to the church. He ends up kickstarting the Enlightenment, mm. which then led into the Renaissance. Mm. So you have Aristotle and you have Aquinas. And then the last A is uh, a novelist and philosopher, Ayn Rand, who most people probably know as the author of The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and so forth. So those are the three Aristotelian yeah, philosophers, big three Aristotelian philosophers in history. And so I'm an Aristotelian, I believe that your only means to survival, your only absolute, is your reason. Mm -hmm. And if something is beyond reason, it's it's not worthwhile, it's not useful. And the only means to not only survival, but to thrive is uh, your reason. And so basically if, applying your mind to the facts of reality. So if you can't perceiving, see it, conceptualizing, abstracting, 
And that's where Western civilization comes from. Right. That's how you go from a thousand years of darkness in the, the, the Christian dark ages to rediscovering things like uh, running water and elevators. Because Rome had elevators, yeah. and then the next thousand years we were combing our hair with rat bones in Europe. Right. Gee, I yeah. wonder what happened. Well, yeah. the snuffing out of, of, of reason. Yeah. Burning of the library at Alexandria, destroying all of that knowledge and replacing it with belief in the absence of proof, which is the definition of faith, mm. which is what I guess what brings us to our topic today. I want to be real clear. I don't want to come off as one of these arrogant atheists, although I guess if you're a believer, any atheist can look arrogant, because I would say probably a good 50% of my friends are believers. Again, I don't share that belief. I understand why they believe. I do understand that there are benefits to religion. I have a lot of, a lot of my friendly family back home in Chicago are religious or church going people. And I just, I, so I just, I wanted to be clear that I'm not gonna be one of these guys who's gonna come up here and say, you're silly for worshiping or, or whatever, that there's, there's reasons for it. And I, for, again, for the longest time was a believer and I compartmentalized, I think a lot of people do but some people don't. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm impressed by anybody who has the courage of their convictions and can articulate why they believe what they believe or think what they think. And there's that. But I, myself, am an Aristotelian. For me, yeah, it's, re yeah. it's reason all the way. Like, it's like, if you can't, if you're going to make a claim of knowledge, it, the onus of proof is on you. Yeah. So I think a lot of it probably had to do with, you know, just the, the state of the Catholic Church of, of being leaned back in my chair in religion class in first grade because I was having an allergy attack and basically being intimidated by a nun who didn't understand that I wasn't trying to interrupt her class. I was having a health issue. Yeah. And she decided to lean me, literally lean back. I'm like a, what, a six or seven year old boy, first grade, however old you are there. Tilts me back in my chair like she's Joe Pesci in a gangster movie intimidating me. Wow. Suffice to say, it took three teachers and a couple administrators to pry my mother off of that nun, uh, and lucky for her because she'd probably be in a pine box uh, if she hadn't. Yeah, and uh, that was my last year of Catholic school. So that was it, I was no longer at that school. I would continue on with what's called CCD, Catholic Christian Doctrine, where if you are a Christian of the Catholic Church, you continue every Monday after, you know, Monday nights to go and basically learn how to be a good Christian and or Catholic. We did that up until I was in about eighth grade when I had another awful teacher try to tell me that if I ever made enough money, if I was ever successful enough to either own a fancy car or a nice home, that I was morally wrong for either purchasing any, either one of those two things, I should have given it to the church instead. I told her, screw you, it's my money. And, <laughs> and that was it. I got in the car. I said, by the way, you're going to get a note. You're going to get a call from this teacher. And... I just don't like this. I don't like being told that if I earn something myself, that I'm somehow wrong for wanting to enjoy the res the, the, the efforts, the fruits of my own labor. Yeah, yeah. And my mom's like, fine, you don't have to go back, whatever. Yeah. And that was it. Um, and I, I, yeah, I've been, I don't know if I've been a attentive student of Aristotelian philosophy for probably the better part of 20 years now, maybe a little over 20 years, off and on. I'm not the best, I'm not an authority on Aristotelianism, objectivism, all of these things. Uh, uh, but I, I think I know enough that I, I know enough to guide my life. And I know enough to know I can detect. I have a pretty good BS detector at this point. Yeah. That said, uh, I have been going down. I, when I find something interesting, I really go down a rabbit hole. So like from 2019 to about 2021, it was all, you know, Russian Soviet film, Russian culture, history, just went down. Now I'm sort of going down my Islamic rabbit hole. Because again, in the West, we just don't learn a whole lot about it. Um, the American education system has done a piss poor job of including a study of comparative religions yeah. in our schools. I grew up, you know, where I grew up, obviously there were Jewish people, there were, you know, Protestants, there were Catholics. I don't think I met my first Muslim until maybe college. You know, it's just, really? it was just a, yeah, I, I, I think it was a long, I mean, maybe I had and I just didn't know. 
but it wasn't until college that I made my first friend who was Muslim or was really became aware of it. And, uh, but even then, most of what I learned about was through the lens of really post 9-11 politics and, and, and all of that. So I, I never, it was a long time before I was be able to sit down and have a conversation with somebody who was Muslim and not have it be about, okay, terrorism or, or whatever. And realizing that a lot of these people are pretty chill, uh, cool people. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just sort of delving into uh, learning about this now. I find the theology of it is like the stories, because you grow up Catholic, you know about Jesus and you know about Mary, who is the mother of God in Catholicism. And so learning about Jesus and Mary from an Islamic perspective and how the story is a bit different, how Jesus is not a, uh, he is, Jesus is the Messiah, he is the son of Mary, he is not the son of God. He is a prophet, and so on. So, and so it's just it's different how they, how they see these things, and so I've just sort of been delving into that, and then again, following these different um, scholars, these, these sheikhs online, and just, uh, again, impressed how they're able to sort of put some of this history alongside the Western civilization history that I know, so I can kind of, oh, okay, this happened at that time, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, I've been talking way too much, bringing it back to the question of God. And I've sort of been sort of trying to sort of like uh, situate in my mind where that Islamic understanding or, or conception of God fits, you know, next to the Christian one, next to the Judaic one, and so forth. And it's, it's interesting because, again, I, I, I hit an epistemological wall with the concept of God because I'm this guy of reason, man of reason now. So I think a, a lot of the things I've, I've read in the Quran are really beautiful. I think it's interesting how they conceive of demons and Satan and, and angels and, you know, uh, where their rules come from. And, and uh, I'll say this about religion in general, but definitely I think with regard, regarding to Islam is there is an order to it. And there definitely seems to, as, as someone who was raised Catholic, has had friends of all different Christian sects, yeah, or, yeah. or uh, what is it, um, beliefs, or not beliefs, the, not the, the different, not reformations, I'm blanking on the word, but, and then I look at Islam, I'm like, man, that is, there's a discipline to that. I mean, you've got the prayer, you know, praying five times a day, we're in Ramadan now, you know, you can't eat uh, until after sundown for a month. I mean, it's like, wow, that's pretty, it's pretty intense. And so it's just, it's just very different. It just seems a lot more, uh, whereas I kind of grew up a cafeteria Catholic. I got all of the guilt and some of, and obviously the beautiful art. Mm -hmm. Catholic Church has an amazing art collection because again, the Italian Renaissance, I mean, it was, it was that, it was the Romans, it was the, the Italians. That's fantastic, but the a lot of the unearned guilt, not a lot of all of the unearned guilt that you sort of absorb uh, being raised a Catholic, not unlike being raised Jewish and Jewish guilt, uh, is there, and I think that's just horrific for your mind. I think it just rips it apart. Uh, unearned guilt, I think, is a terrible yoke to put on someone, and Catholics pretty much put it on you super early. You know, this sense of unearned, not just unearned guilt, but this unearned shame and so forth. It just um, but it's, again, with regard to, and then, you know, I'm sort of the other side of it uh, that I'm sort of exploring now with Islam, it's, again, it's very orderly. There's a discipline to, oh, I know what it is. UFC, MMA. I noticed if you look at the Islamic fighter or the Muslim fighters in UFC, whoa, you take Khabib, for example. Mm -hmm. Holy smoke, 29 wins, zero losses, I think. It might be 34 wins, zero losses. Yeah, he's 29. All these guys do is train, pray, sleep, train, pray. You know, it's, 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 it's the simplification of life. Not to say that it's easy. These guys are absolute beasts with regard to what they do. And I think that's, I think that's very interesting. You know, there, I think there is some, as, as someone who did believe at one time, you go into a situation and you, and you, you believe that God is on your side. That can really give you a jolt. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But... Yeah, I guess that's sort of where I'm at right now. I was impressed by the incredible discipline of these Muslim fighters in MMA and UFC and 
I'm like, where does that come from? And so I just, I received a copy of the Quran from a friend a long time ago that I still had. Start thumbing through it, start looking things up and just, you know, jumping around from surah to surah. And it's just been very interesting. It's been kind of a fun study of something that is part of world history, part of human civilization that I really just had a massive, and still, I guess, largely do have a massive hole in my knowledge about. So, but again, coming at that from an Aristotelian point of view. So, yeah. No, I thought that, wow, man, that was a great, like, you basically just kind of explain your where experience I'm... with everything. So, I'll, right. now I'll go and uh, explain to you guys my whole experience with religion, philosophy, God. So, I was raised um, that you can believe whatever you want. I was raised, uh, my dad's Jewish, my mom's nothing. Okay. And so he I was like, hey, it. yeah, he was like, hey, you can have a bar mitzvah if you want. And I was like, okay, yeah, why not? Okay. So I did that. Um, and I, I, I don't think I was like believing in God, but I think, uh, I, I, Culturally, I, I do, though, yeah, probably, I do, right? yeah, I do, I do, I do think at that age as a teenager, I still thought there, maybe there's something out there. Right. Um, well, as a teenager, you're trying to figure yourself yeah, out. Yeah. So, but then after that, I was like, there was a period where I was like, you know what? I kind of just want to believe in Jesus for a while and just see how that feels. You know, I basically just took it like, let me see how it feels. So the, I did I did the Jewish, you know, had my bar mitzvah. Um, then sometime like some, one of my friends was kind of interested in Jesus and I just got interested in it and uh, said, I'm going to believe in Jesus. So I believed in Jesus for a couple of years, or at least I told myself I believe in Jesus for a couple of years. Okay. Then... Uh, come a time I graduated high school, I uh, decided to uh, volunteer for a program called the Wolf Program where you can go and live on a farm and get room and board. And it happened to be a farm of Muslim people. It was on a mosque, a Muslim retreat. And Was um, this back in New York? Uh, I was okay. in New York and I flew out to Napa Valley. It was in Napa oh, Valley. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that was the first time I came to California. And I had some experiences, Kyle, let me tell you where, that was the first time I had an experience where I thought, maybe I really do believe in God. Mm -hmm. Because up to that point, I was always like, let me just see how it feels. And it never really felt, I never really felt the presence you, of you, God. You entertained the idea. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but then when I went to this Muslim mosque, uh, or this farm that had a uh, mm -hmm. mosque attached to it, it was like a retreat, basically. It's a really cool place. Anyways, um, I had this experience where I found this deer that was dying and I, it was in suff it was suffering like very badly. Um, and this guy, Hadi, the guy I was working for there, you know, he so had a deer. Yeah, he had a gun. Yeah. Yeah. It's leg was broken. It was going to die. Okay. And we went up to him. It was just like, we, we just looked at it and realized we needed to put it down. And looking in the deer's eyes, like I did feel a presence of something I've never felt before. And at that moment, I was like, you know what? Maybe call it God. Call, call it whatever. It's it's something. You said you right? felt this at the I moment? felt this when, when I was looking in the deer's eyes as we were putting it down. Okay. 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 And I just felt this feeling. Maybe it was love. Maybe it was. But, but, but I felt something outside of me sort of envelop my whole soul. And at that moment, I thought there's something else and I'm sure of it. I don't believe, I don't think I believed up to that point in this sort of like God thing. I've never believed in the idea. Like to me, if there's a God, there's not a word for it yet. Like there's no word for what I believe. Like you can, there, oh, okay, so let me. So you had some type let me of go a back up to the story. Animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the life and death right in your hand. Yeah, right there. and, and wow. you know, I was on this mosque and it was like everyone was praying all the time. Maybe it was that, maybe it was the right. community. All right, so long story short, um, basically after that, my 20s involved just goofing off. So I'm 31 now, and up till a couple years ago, I basically just did what most people do, and I, I didn't really thought about it at all. Um, I had that one experience where I felt like, wow, there's a presence of something else, and it happened to be on a, is, you know, in, in, around Islamic people. Right. Um, but then now, up until up until now, I just I really haven't thought about it. There's been times when I've done just sort of like, you know, Mc, McDonald's prayers where I'm just like, God, just please, right. please, 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 let, really please, let me, right right please right. let me do this. Please don't let me do that. But so. Honestly, I'm really glad that we're talking about this because this is something that's just starting to, I'm just starting to think about too. And maybe we're on some sort of connective, 
um, line here with this because like I am at a place where I'm like, I want to believe. Here's the thing, I want to believe. Like I, I really want to, like I, I wish I was, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I know I was gonna say I was gonna kind of play the other side of the coin on this one, but sure. I, it, 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 it's talking about yeah, it's 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 more to the point where I I know that people that believe like there's got to be a part of them that is just like obviously I don't know for sure, um, but what what it comes down to on a fundamental level of people that are believers in whatever religion is that you you get a tribe, you get your tribe, you get to be right. with people, and as we know. Like a, a happy dog is usually a dog that's in its pack. Has a pack, right? right. I, you see a dog on its own; it's like it doesn't know what to do with itself. It's there sad. Really it's lonely. It's whatever, no right? Man? Truly lone yeah. Wolf, right? And and we are animals. Okay. And 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 what I gotta say is like when you get around people, like I can't. I, like I'll go to a church and I'll just feel better, even though right. I know that that I, I even though like I don't believe that a man was put here by uh, God. Um, I don't believe that. I think that there, if there is a God, that, the, the, that we're not the chosen ones. We're not the ones to profess it to the world. We're not the ones but the to... the sense of community say, in that church that you visit feels good. Yeah, yeah. Because there is, there is that warmth and that yeah. welcome. Because I've, I've gone to different churches yeah. or whatnot. Or, yeah. You know, Let, let me just wrap this whole like sort of my story up. So up until that point, blah, 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 didn't really have an idea of it. And now what I'm sort of realizing is, is that there's a like sort of just need to be like connecting with others. And I think that's what religion gives. It gives people that right. sense of community, community fellowship. right? Fellowship. And then they have these experiences like I did on the mosque where it's like, I felt the presence of something greater. And oh, I'm around people that are Muslim, so then this must be the right religion. Right. And so that's how it happens, I'm sorry to say, but most of the people out there that are religious, they like they grew up that way. Their parents were telling them that. They, it got put in their head over and over and over. And then after 18 years of being told something, it's really hard to go out of those woods. You know, it's really hard to it's come even, back. It seems like either goes one way, the yeah, either, 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 one way either you're in it and you're in it forever, yeah. or it's push on you so hard that you end up deflecting, yeah. pushing yeah. it away. So at this point, what I feel is that if I were to say, do I believe? I say, I believe. Do I believe in any of the religions? No, but I do. Um, I believe there is something that we just can't, cannot comprehend. There is something that is going on here that we just can't comprehend. So I believe there is something. When you, when you say something can't cover, do you mean like the, the I guess like the our, mystery our, of our, life? Our or? little minds aren't, there's something that we can't, we, we just haven't figured out yet. You know, we only use 10% of our brains and it's just like, there's obviously like something going on that we just, we, we don't know, you know? I don't know. Anyways, so where I'm at with it is, I'm studying philosophy. I'm studying sort of what, what to do, like morally. Um, you strike me as a guy who you probably, you strike me because again, again, because you're a BJJ practitioner, yeah. you strike me as, I feel like you, you probably are into the Stoics yeah. and like Miyamoto Musashi. And I'm really like, into Taoism. I'm really into okay. Taoism. So what I honestly would like consider myself or like, you know, what are you? I would say I'm a Taoist. I would say that- Student of the Tao. I, yeah, I would say that I believe in the unity of the world. I believe that we are just as much the air we breathe as the body that we are in. Everything's you know, and I, yeah, and I know that sounds sort of like vanilla and it sounds sort of like, oh, unity and we're all one thing. And what that actually is, is pantheism. Pantheism is the belief that we are we are nature and that god is nature so we are part of god so if god were to look in the mirror all god would see was us and everything uh, and i think that's kind of cool you know what i mean like if, well you know that that's and so that basically ties up where i'm at i know i rambled just like no, 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 that's <laughs> what we, I we had to talk that's what I did. and give our just one smidgen of where we're at with it i think we're both at a place of we're open to learning, open to interpretation, right. open to comments, open to 
hopefully people talking about their experiences and having people on this podcast that have completely different yeah, world views. Yeah, it's you know? it's, 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 that's what we're so saying. that's that's no no no, I, no that's that's all great stuff. It's like you talk about how um, uh, in the Tao that it's that man is part of nature, and that's something that yeah. I, I I think that's that's an important point because yeah. we, man is part of nature. You know, humankind. Human humans are part of nature. We, yeah. We, yeah. we don't, I think we think because we live in cities and we have things like air conditioning and we have airplanes, like all of these things that we're somehow separate from nature. And the right. truth is, right. we're part of it. Uh, we're just, a, we are a very unique part of nature. We are right. the part of nature that is able to transform our environment to suit, sustain yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Francis Bacon said, nature, in order to be commanded, must be obeyed. Yeah. So you you can dig metal out of the earth to build cars and homes and buildings to protect yeah. yourself, yeah. but you also have to remember not to throw garbage and refuse into the oceans that yeah. ends up in your water supply that ends up killing yeah. your seaside community. So again, for me, it all comes yeah. back to reason. Reason yeah. allows you to yeah. conceptualize uh, an abstract drilling machines yeah. that allow you to then build cities right, that right, then right. you know extend you go from living for 40 years and now we're living to 80 so maybe in the next 30 years we'll all live to 120 or 160 yeah. or what yeah. and all at the same time you really don't want things like the pacific garbage patch yeah. sitting in the ocean yeah right you know slowly disintegrating getting into the fish so that every time we go to eat sushi we're eating microplastics, yeah, we which we're all probably eating microplastics anyway. Really, you know, so I would not define myself as like a big environmental person, yeah. but I think it stands to reason that it's probably a good idea not to toss your trash in the ocean or to dump you know, your, you know, chemicals into, no, you know, the, into, idea. you know, into the, into the water. And not a good idea. I think that there's, there is a rash, there, there is a way to be, I think, a rational, reasonable steward yeah. of the environment and the world around you yeah. uh, that probably hasn't been charted yet. And so I, I don't, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into the environmental stuff, but anyways, um, but there's, yeah, I think within reason, right. some so of, many this. of these things make sense. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So we're talking about reason. Um, what I, what and again, I'm no what expert. What I just know what I know. Right, so. right. We're just giving our experience. What I've learned, and how, how I understand it. This is just all our interpretations. Um, we're not masters. We're not. We don't have you know PhDs in history and all this stuff. But we do know a lot about this stuff because we do our own research. But I think what comes to mind with like logic and what I'm thinking about you is like you are you you believe in science. You believe in. Um, right. The big bang. I, I believe in. Well, in, here's the thing. I, I believe it is certainly the scientific method. And all of that. The Big Bang is, is interesting. Yeah. Because again, <laughs> I'm not a physicist. I'm gonna be probably talking out my behind. But here. you believe in the Big Bang, right? I don't. Okay. As I understand from what I've heard from physicists and things, limited things that I've read, there may have been something called the Big Bang that helped trigger maybe most of what we see in the universe. Mm -hmm. But I've also I, and I don't know how, I guess where I might have a question about that, and this is where I would want to learn more from somebody who knows way more than I do, because I don't, is, okay, a Big Bang triggered the birth of the universe. Okay, so if matter can neither create, be created nor destroyed, per Einstein, yeah. where did all that energy come to build this universe? Yeah. It didn't just snap into existence. Unless, of course, you are, you know, someone who is a believer in God and just believe that God was preceded the universe and yeah. said, let there be light, and, and now there's a universe. Yeah. That is not enough for me. I would go back to the Aristotelian premise okay. of, and I don't, and I think this might have been Rand, it might have been Rand extrapolating, I think extrapolating from Aristotle, that existence exists. Okay? Yeah. Existence exists. And it exists independent of how I or you think or feel about it. Yeah. You do, you, your thoughts do not create reality. Reality is, is not a product of your mind. Yeah. It's not that, oh, I, I, you know, all that. So basically, the universe as existence has always existed and it always will. Mm -hmm. Something can't come from nothing if, if these laws of, of these, these, right. these, these, physical laws hold, 
you can't like the whole idea I, of string theory. It's like okay, if every time you make a decision, boom, there's an expansive universe yeah. that 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 is birthed where you didn't make that choice. Yeah, you need a crap ton of energy to create a universe. So where does that energy come from? Mm. So I don't know if the Big Bang is what created the universe, mm. or did the Big Bang create our corner of the universe, right. the galaxies that we right, see. Right. You know, and that's what I'm talking about when I think there's something we can't comprehend. Like, for example, what was before the Big Bang? I mean, scientifically, if we got a physicist in here right now, you would say, the Big Bang is real and I can prove it to you. That's what they would, they, they would say. Um, but so when I think about the Big Bang, I just think, wow, bringing it back to unity, like just say the Big Bang is real, right? Mm -hmm. What it was is a combustion. And I'm not gas. saying it didn't happen. I'm not saying it yeah, didn't happen. Yeah, Based yeah, on yeah. what the experts are telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is the way I look at it. Thinking about if the Big Bang is real, it was gas and basically what happened was it ignited. And then so now it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why we say, the universe is always expanding. expanding. So when I think about that, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. What that means is, is that it started as just this one element and now it's this big thing. So that means that literally, if you looked at it, if you had recorded this whole thing since the Big Bang and you looked at it, you would see, oh, we started from this and now we're this. So we are all this one thing. And which makes me just like think about like how like we're all actually African American, you know, we're all actually just descendants of these all, apes. What is it, like Stanley Kubrick's you know one I mean? of my favorite movies in terms of like now we're discussing the origin of man. Yeah, one of the best movies ever made, uh, Stanley Kubrick's two thousand one. Oh, Odyssey. that entire movie yeah, is basically. I mean, it starts off with the dawn of man, but that yeah. entire movie is basically uh, it's the beginning of the dawn of man where we start out as sort of these intelligent apes yeah. and then we become human and then we become star children. Yeah. So basically this planet where this life that exists now originated all came from coalescing stardust becomes single celled organisms, then becomes fish that become amphibians, that become lizards, that become mammals, that become human beings, homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And then we can see that maybe we merge with machines as it seems like we're going out. And then we eventually go back to the stars and become these highly, you know, I don't know, some sort of star children communing with higher levels of the universe. That the whole point of that, that's basically what that movie was about. Yeah. And again, I can't I, I a lot of these concepts in physics I can't speak to. I can only speak to what we but it does seem that at least with the as life on Earth has developed, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh it, it's 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 awe inspiring. And I, it makes me really sad when I see people wasting time on toxic mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. and really stupid crap on yeah. social media. Yeah. When it's like, wow, we we came from stardust. We well, we from actually, yeah, yeah, bring, we, it, we, bring we it. We used to just right. be fish. We in the came ocean. from fish. Dude. We came from. I fish. mean, we you, we came from the water, crawled out, yeah. got rid of our gills, right. and now we're walking around breathing air. Yeah, and which really, lattes. And, and this is just how my mind works. Drinking lattes. What, yeah. I, what I think now is the whole, bringing it back to Taoism a little bit, is the duality, okay. right? There's man, woman, light, dark, pain, happy, uh, you know, like land animals, fish animals. There's a duality going on here that I think we need to pay attention to. Um, and honestly, I just, fun you know what about. I mean? Like, if you think about this, think about. and that's what Taoism is. If you look at the yin and yang, there's like a black and white, but then within the black, there's a white, and within the white, there's a black. So, I, well, this I, 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 I wish there was more conversation like this going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And I, the, I think, I mean, there, the better podcasts out there mm -hmm. do talk about this type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like there's exactly. like people, there's there is, I, I really don't understand how people can go through life and have no intellectual curiosity about the world around them, about right. their own existence, right. about the existence of the world. Well, we live in such about a curiosity society. about our, our other people around us yeah. and getting a sense of, like, as I've gotten to know Noah, yeah. understanding his context of how he's arrived at where he is at right now, why he believes what he believes. Mm what he's learned, what knowledge he has acquired mm. per his particular journey as a human being in the world and, and vice versa. I, I, I don't know if I would have necessarily cared. I think, yeah. I think as a, as a 20 something Aristotelian, I think I was way more arrogant. I think mm. I found this thing 
and now I know, yeah. and everyone who does it, 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 and, right. and again, I still think that I'm right. I mean, I still think that reason is your only absolute, yeah. and, and so on, but I don't think I would go at things as, as, um, yeah. as harsh. Like, for example, my, my, mother, my mother passed away just this past December, and we were estranged and so on, but I found myself really, uh, I didn't cry for two weeks, and I was in a, a voice lesson, and I have been working on this song that she, that the only reason I know this song is because she played it all the time when I was like four years old. And so it, 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 it you know, when you're a young person, you're exposed to things. It's just, you're a sponge as a kid. Yeah. And I nailed it. Pitch perfect. Yeah. And all of a sudden it just hit me that I only know this song. And this song is because my mom introduced this to me in the nucleus of my childhood. And whew, it all fell out. Like all, and, and. The morning of my mother wasn't because I necessarily miss her because we were largely estranged. She was an abusive alcoholic, just possibly mentally ill, or just a serial Olympic class Herculean evader of reality. And within Aristotelian philosophy, you have to acknowledge reality. And if you avoid, you can avoid reality, but you cannot avoid the consequences yeah. of avoiding reality. Yeah. That's something that Rand said. And my mom tried to do that her entire life, and she almost died yeah. uh, several times as a result of it. Yeah. And I just remembered, like in the aftermath of her dying, I just felt so bad that she had gotten through almost 70 years of life, basically hobbled, right. self-imposed hobbling yeah. because of this inability to get out from under this addiction. Yeah. Uh, but also, and it's like, I, maybe it is a sickness, but there were times I watched her make a conscious choice to do these terrible things to herself and, and to other people. And it's, it really did, it reinforced for me the philosophy that I follow. Right. A philosophy of reason and death. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. this is it. This right. is, and, and so the standard of value that I follow, yeah. which is objectivism, is life itself is your standard of value. That which hurts and harms life is the bad or the evil. That which protects, sustains, and helps life to thrive is the good. So something like excessive alcohol use, uh, drug use, uh, ex at least excessive drug use. So, yeah. Some drugs, I don't think cannabis is bad as like heroin, obviously. No, yeah. Um, I'm not a big drug user myself at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I rarely, if ever, drink uh, just because of, again, my upbringing and, and the issues of my family. Mm -hmm. But that uh, life is now... Everything that you are ever going to have as a living being requires you to be a rational being to in order to conduct a, a, a life where you don't just survive, but you thrive. And then this becomes your legacy. When I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm not looking back on my life watching everybody mourn me. So I have to do the best that I can to build the best, strongest character I can to be. And, and also, again, qua objectivism is the moral purpose of your life as far as I'm concerned as far as, as I understand the philosophy that I adhere to mm. is your happiness is the highest moral purpose you can attain. And that goes all the way back to uh, Aristotle, eudaimonia, happiness and its pursuit. That being able to freely pursue your values as a rational being, which requires that you be free to think. Yeah. So no one can initiate force against you. You have to be free to apply your mind to the facts of reality to figure out your purpose and your values. Mm. And as long as that is the case, you have a fighting chance to build a good life. Yeah. That, that, that's where, where I'm coming from, where, where my school is coming from. And that's where I really do hit a wall with most religion because I'm really up against society, the church, the state, the education system that all want to tell you God how you friend. should, how you should, how you should, how you should think. And, right. you know, school should properly executed should teach you how to think, not what to think. And, you know, right now, at least in the United States, our, Ameri our American culture, our American education system is basically getting torn apart by this insane culture war we're in. And so that I, I not to get too deep in the weeds, I, it would not surprise me if within 30 years the American public education system vanishes because the two far sides of the left and right are wanting to impose their will and, and force your children to think like they do 
in, in the process, completely eviscerating the education system and everyone ends up just educating their own kids because they have no choice because the ideas coming from the far left and the far right are insane. Yeah. And, and they are, they, they do not stand to reason. But anyways, I won't get on that soapbox. That's a whole other bag of hammers. But where I'm coming from is I, there was a part of me that wished I could say that my mother was now at peace at the right hand of the Lord and was there with her, her family, again, reunited with, I don't know where that's coming from. There's a beep. Um, um, anyways, um, there, it's, it's, I wish I could have that comfort. I don't. And it reinforced for me that I really have to hold myself to account, keep my head, keep my reason, so that I don't end up on a path like my mom did, went along and so forth. And so that's, that's why it's like, I, I gotta come back to reason. It's like, no, I can't pass the buck on myself and say, well, if I don't, appre if I don't accomplish what I want in this life, there's always the afterlife. Yeah, and here's what as I As far as I'm concerned, there's no afterlife, so no, I've gotta I've got do my best now, and if I die trying, yeah. that was a noble life. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go try to figure out where this is coming from. Yeah, you, talking, you take that, sorry. Right now. Well, here's the thing. What I believe is, is that there are inexplainable, let me see, emotions, inexplainable experiences, inexplainable feelings that people that believe have. And since we don't have a word for the sort of um, other dimension that sometimes comes well, into our lives, right? The supernatural, we use the word God, or I use the word God. And I had this experience when I was in Jerusalem and just being in this uh, place where there's just so much energy. Uh, I mean, it's just like we live in such a non secular country. And it, no, over we live there, in a secular country. Right, right, right. You're right, right. <laughs> that's right. Other way around. Where's and Jerusalem? Over, yeah, right. It's very religious. Right, that's all right. Three, and so over the guys got me. Over there, when I was there, like that was the actually second sort of experience I had at the Wailing Wall, putting a note into the Wailing Wall or a prayer where I just had this overcoming sense of or overwhelming. overwhelming sense of there is something going on here that that shows itself on occasion. And, you know, I don't know what that is, but I, I just know that there's something. So currently I'm in a state where I'm here. I am. I'm 31 years old and I'm so glad and grateful that I'm thinking about this stuff now because my grandpa is 97 years old and it's kind of like very moving, but also sad to see him now at seven, 97 years old starting to think about God. After 97 years no, of life, like thinking about God he's, he's contemplating yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to wonder yeah, contemplate his life, but in that wonder whether or not God exists. Oh, and so I'm right, and, I'm, right, and right, I, so I'm just looking at that. I'm just want to say again, I'm just so grateful that I get to look at him and say, "Wow, I don't want to be 97 and start thinking about that. I want to start doing that now." So over this last year, that's figure your stuff out now, I, right? And I just think it's it's the way that we go about it is just so outdated, you know, like the textbooks of religion and this and that. And well, I think there, I, 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 let me, let me yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. I think that there, I think there's good, I think there's, there's, I think there's good resources out there. I think, well, one, I think it's great that you are asking questions. Yeah. And I also, what I like about you as well is you are someone who takes ideas seriously. Yeah. yeah. And I think part of the reason why our stupid to toxic politics these days is so stupid and toxic is because it's not actually based on ideas. It's an arbitrary set of sort of positions determined by ideology, which is, you know, it's just, it's, it's not consistent, a lot of it. And the reason it sucks is because we're not taking ideas seriously. Very we're just, important. we're picking sides, we're emotionally picking tribes, I'm on this nationalist side, I'm on this, you know, this side on the left or whatever it is, and now we're just tearing each other apart to score points for our team, and your life isn't any better. Yeah. It's not. Um, 
And and so and I'm right. And, and, You're and, it's, and, it's, and this is the thing is I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that if, if you want to prove somebody wrong, sometimes you just have to let them have it their own way. Yeah. And for me, my life is not about proving people wrong. My life and the reason I follow the philosophy that I follow and the way I really work to conduct myself is because I want to have the best life possible. I want to know the truth about the world, about, you know, these big questions that, you know, you know, that, that loom, you know, what is, what is truly right and, and what is wrong? What is, what is the truth and what is false? What's the best way I can be happy? What is my purpose? How can I impart that to people? How can I live the best life possible and help build a, a rich life? And I don't mean just materially wealthy. I mean to be satisfied in my soul, meaning my mind, because yeah. within objectivism, it's like you are, you are a man. You be, want to become a man or woman of self-made soul. And that comes from being able to freely think, to discover your purpose and your values, and to build and to pursue those things. And so that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, I, if I was like that, well, I, I thanks. It, it's it, it's not about going out there and trying to convert people to my side because you are either open to reason or you're not. You either want to engage these ideas and have these discussions and think about these things or not. And I've been doing it for over twenty years now. And yeah, you you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink. You can lead a man to philosophy. You can meet, lead a man to ideas, but you can't make him think. That that he has to want to do on his own. Right. And I have been a person who has been overcome by my emotions, had just arbitrary beliefs that weren't based on anything. Yeah. You know, the belief that I had per Catholicism wasn't something I came to freely. It was something that was injected into me right. a, as an a priori assumption right. before I had the ability to reason through these things. Right. And I was able to uncoil a lot of these things. Right. Not to say that there is no value to Catholicism. I think that there is some good stuff there. I do, I, 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 you know, I like a lot of the intellectuals of, of the church. I've had great conversations with Oblates, Jesuits, you name it. A lot of smart people. And a lot of really smart, interesting yeah. folks. And again, the art, the art, the art. It, it, oh, it all comes back to yeah. the Italian Renaissance. And, and you know, you look at the Sistine Chapel, it's just unbelievable mm. what they were able to do mm. by candlelight. I mean, look at the stuff painted in like the 1400s, the 1500s, Insane. the 1600s. And there's like, okay, you, you know, when the day was over, you had to either paint by a candlelight or you just didn't start painting until the next day. Yeah. Unbelievable what human beings are, are capable of. And most importantly, I wanted to say per, you're talking about inexplicable feelings. I'm of, I'm of the position that the world, the universe, is knowable. Mm -hmm. You look about the look at the things that we didn't know in Aristotle's time, for example. True. And what we lost and rediscovered per Thomas Aquinas, and the things we have come to, you know, we're, we're on the verge of of some incredible breakthroughs with AI. That when I was born were purely science fiction. Right. You know, and so that's, there's, you know, the, these things are knowable. The universe is, is intelligible. Sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, sometimes that knowledge can be lost and that's the yeah. thing we shouldn't take for granted that just because we have this grand technology that this world can't be plunged right back into the dark ages because it absolutely can. Uh, and if we do not get a hold on this rampant emotionalist tribalism, we can go right back. You know, it, all, all it takes is the wrong person pressing a nuke yeah. or the wrong person, you know, enough people reject thinking and reason, we can go right back there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, 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 uh, that's a warning, I think, to all of us that you don't necessarily have to be um, an objectivist or Aristotelian or what have you. Um, you have to love your life and the world enough yeah. to know how to check your BS. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you know what, maybe ripping each other apart at the seams and you know, fighting somebody to the, to the death online for some silly point maybe isn't the best way to live life. Yeah. You know, you're going to the mat. A lot of us are carrying water for people who do not care about us. These politicians, these celebrities, social media influencers, do they care or are they just out there for themselves? I'm not saying none of them care, but I think it, qua politics, I think a lot of it is just like, really? These are people who by profession 
go out there to tell people what they want to hear so that they could be elected back into power to, on a $100,000 a year salary, somehow amass a net worth of $100 million. But they're your guy or they're your gal. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. It's, that's pretty crazy. That doesn't, yeah, that, again, that doesn't wash for, you know, I'm coming from. But anyways, I think the point is, there's a, your life is a gift. It is the most important value you have. Again, for my position, it is the standard of value by which everything should be measured. So anything that takes away from that is bad. Anything that helps to facilitate and help build it is the good. Right. So while you have this life, do the most that you can with it. Yeah. Not, you know, sacrificing people to yourself for and goal, nor sacrificing yourself for somebody else's goal. You need to figure out what you want yeah, and, and look, go after that if, with everything if, you've got. If following the the gospel makes you not cheat on your wife, make a good living, work out, be a good person, follow good values. Amen. And keep with that. I think that just that there is a lot of people out there like us that question things and want to know and don't really know and we admit that we just don't know so i think like for the people that, i think we know some things right but i think Maybe for the, we don't know everything for the people that like you don't know and you you want to know what i would say is and this is from my place where i'm at right now is and, I, and it's not in a sort of strange way create your own sort of religion and i don't mean like religion like create your own religion and then go and spew sure it to right. people but like create a way of life that you know is kind of parallel to what a religion is you know a religion is like di disciplining yourself to do this especially in islam five time prayer five times no pork so create a ritual create a routine create an acknowledgement of mother earth Get outside, put your feet in the dirt, work with your hands a little bit, you know, connect to nature, connect to the world. You, you're going to feel a hell of a lot better. And get outside, get some I'll sun. Get outside for sure. You know, if you yeah. just go outside, go up a mountainside, take your shirt off, lay down, you will feel differently. You will feel like, wow, okay. There's this whole human civilization down there that's like very important and I have to live by it. But they, at the end of the day, it does, that doesn't matter to the rest of the world. That doesn't matter to you that. You said make your own religion. You know? it, it reminds me of something Thomas Paine once said. Mm. He said, my mind is my own church. Yeah, exactly. And what he meant by that was, and again, Thomas Paine, I mean, if he was, I guess he could be Aristotelian, I think. Something like I mean, that. I mean, I guess I mean, it's certainly sort of the founding fathers and yeah. men of reason. Maybe. So yeah. when, he's, when he say my mind is my own church, I think what he meant by that is this thing up here, this mind, this brain, this is a wholly special thing. Mm -hmm. And you want to safeguard it and keep it uh, proper and keep it keep it sacred. Yeah. And, you know, don't poison it mm -hmm. and live by that. Your mm -hmm. mind is your own church. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, so my, meaning my sense of reason is my guide. Mm -hmm. My sense of reason is my guide and my guide to living. So, uh, if that's what you mean, I'm all behind. That's it. what I mean, I, and I and I do think I'll even I'll even I'll even not concede this point, but I think for through most of my teens, when I still did believe, believe I in was what? believe in God, Jesus. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I did. Yeah, again, Jesus. But let's let, let's God. be clear here. You believe what your parents were. You believe no, 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 what no. was being. No, I mean, not necessarily. Thing. I mean, you it didn't used to actually get actually believe. And it maybe maybe what I was believing was just a, another facet of like cafeteria Catholicism. Right. It was but like as much as I did believe in God, God yeah, okay. but I didn't. I really. I don't. It's like okay, Jesus seemed cool, Mary, but I kind of found like all like but the church and like God's middle managers could. Suck a dick as far as I'm concerned. Right. I didn't like the the nuns. Like it wasn't until like I got to college where I met <laughs> these really cool priests that I could actually have intellectual conversations with, and I respected those guys a lot. But when I still believed up until I was about 19, my point was it's like okay, a lot of these rules seem really weird. Some of them make sense: don't murder, don't kill, don't steal, don't lie, all those things. But I guess my whole point was, okay, why would God give me this life, then give me free will, 
just so that I could turn around and make my entire focus of my life him. Right. It's sort of like, then just make me an angel, because the angels exist, yeah. at least according to the theology that I understand, to worship God. What is the point of creating a completely autonomous being when the whole goal is for them to, for them to come, circle right back and praise you? I just can't, I have a yeah. hard time believing that a, yeah. that a being, let's say God, who is omniscient, so yeah. that's all-knowing, um, uh, omnipotent. omnipotent, so yeah. all-powerful, yeah. and in order, if that's true, then he's got to be all-rational. Yeah. God also has to be all-rational. So, again, all the rules, I don't understand. Like, why give me this life and then get mad at me when I go out and enjoy it? And I don't mean hurt anybody uh, or, or necessarily hurt myself. But I just have a hard time believing that a being that is responsible for creating all that is, is all-knowing and all-powerful, would then have, to, would then need me to stroke his ego. Right. right. It just, like I, I found it, I remember I had, I had quite a few charismatic Christian friends in college, and the amount of praise and worship that they engaged in, I'm like, this seems excessive. Mm. And I, I hate to sound if I'm like judging them, but I guess I am. I'm like, okay, if, if God gave you this life and it's a gift, okay, then go do something with it. I don't think that the Father, the, 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 the creator of all that is, is suffering from, I don't know, a, 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 a weak ego that he needs you to constantly tell him. He knows how great he is. He created you atom by atom and the universe atom by atom. I don't understand the need for the constant praise and worship. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's where it just gets spooky for me. And, you know, the more I explored philosophy and, and ideas, it, I just got further and further away from it. Uh, again, do what you want. It's your life, but don't impose yourself on anybody else. But also be willing to have conversations. That's kind of yeah. what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and, we're having and, conversations. And we'll feel things out. Sometimes it helps to sort of speak aloud what it is you profess to to follow and believe and, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think... I was just talking with my friend, a Muslim friend of mine back home in Chicago, and we were talking about Andalusia, which was a... Uh, in, in Spain, uh, a civilization where Jews, Christians, and Muslims all lived together. Right. in peace yeah. and they all had their scholarship and they all had their worship and it worked wasn't there something called like unitarianism which is like all of them mixed or something like that what is that called I, well there's a universal a universalist unitarian church right which right. is it's, it's it's one of the christian denominations right but i don't know if that existed yet that, uh, that, i feel like that's something that came out of the 20th century um but this andalusia you know was a high point for islam you know the Islamic scholars and the Islamic, you know, uh, you know they maintained the archives, and libraries, and it was just a fascinating conversation that I had with him. And these people, who again, all monotheists, all uh, Abrahamic religions, but had different the theologies, really lived in relative peace with one another. And I don't see why there should be any True. reason why I can't coexist with my friends who are Christian or Jewish or, or Muslim or Taoist or what have. I think that if you are truly secure in your beliefs, then you don't need to use government force or physical force on people to make them believe. You know, it's sort of like this. It's sort of like, I, I remember I said this to uh, a former evangelical friend of mine. I said, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you want to save me, but from where I'm standing, I don't need to be saved. Right. So if you believe that there's a God and I'm wrong, can't you just be happy knowing that I'm going to burn in hell for all eternity? Which is kind of an insane thing to say. I was saying it, you know, facetiously because I don't believe that there is, you know, a, a lake of hellfire, uh, you know, it's just, uh, or any of these things. But I do believe in right and wrong. And I do believe that if you are big enough of an asshole, eventually that comes back to bite you. Eventually you end up isolated. Eventually you end up as a virtual psychotic like. Stalin or Hitler or people who are sociopathic yeah. it's ultimately you you will it, it comes back to you. you can't defy reality yeah. so long and expect to keep your mind intact keep your life intact have meaningful relationships and have a good life it just it's it's contrary to reality yeah and let me just throw something on there I think what I think of when you say that the first thing I think of is karma like I feel like there is tr 
like karma is a true um, thing. Like the more you give out, the more um, positivity you give out, the more you'll get. And I think that's what I was hearing when you were talking. Just well, now. I, I think, I mean, from my point of view, you want to put optimism and benevolence out into the world, but you yeah. only do that by being benevolent with yourself right. and, and being rationally self-interested, yeah. being able to pursue your life. You then serve as an example to yeah. other people yeah. and they're like, hey, you know, what's this guy's deal? Yeah. He I just really think... seems to be driven and yeah. it really seems to be enjoying what he does. Right. I think that's the only way, I don't, I don't believe in karma as a mystical force, but I do believe uh, that how you, how you conduct yourself, how you treat other people, there is a very real response to, if you're somebody, you know, you can't be somebody who throws people under the bus constantly and expect anybody to come to your aid when you need help yeah. because nobody's going to trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, be that a politician, a business person, or just you know a, a friend. And so it's there. There is a rhyme and a reason to all of this. Yeah, there, there, there's some stuff you can take from you know the whole karma. Um, but again, I will give. I'll give. Um, there, here's the thing. There's stuff you can take from every single belief, philosophy, sure. religion. I mean, think you're experiencing that maybe a little bit with sure. the, with the Islam um, readings you've been doing in, in the Quran. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's. I mean, if, if anything, it is it, intellectually. I find it fascinating. Yeah. But there are certainly things where it's like, oh, okay. Like, I guess one of the things that I never do something I, I never made a connection with before was when I, because uh, the one I didn't realize how important Jesus and Mary were. Right. Like Mary is the only woman in the Quran who has a, she has a whole chapter. Mm. I, that, I was shocked that that was the case. Wow. I, didn't, I didn't know, and I didn't know that she was that important. She's revered as the greatest woman to have ever lived within Islam. Mm. And then it hit me. Interesting. All of the images I've, I've ever, I ever saw as, uh, as a kid or as, as a Catholic growing up, Mary has her veil. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's why Muslim yeah. women wear the veil, the, the cover. The mm. I'm like, oh, I, I, and immediately, and from that point on, I looked at Muslim women very differently. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that makes total sense because she's sort of like this, you know. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad is sort of like the, uh, and, and 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 the prophets are looked at as the examples for men. Yep, Mary, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why these women wear the veil. Yep. And so those types of things are, if, if nothing else, it is, it is fascinating intellectually. I'm, in, I'm really interested in, in how they view yeah. uh, what, what, what goodness is and like how, how, like I'm trying to wrap my head around how their view of, of, of God's, like God allows things uh, to happen, allows you free will and, uh, and, and, and can guide you, but does allow shaitan or Satan to operate in the universe. So I, I don't understand why that would be the case uh, or why that is. Yeah. Um, like, so again, there's, I'd love to sit down with somebody who can yeah. explain these things to me. And but you, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I could ever convert to Islam. I, there's, you know, I just, I, I don't know that I would be a very good Muslim, but I am fascinated by it. Uh, I do have, you know, I've, you know, I've got my, my buddy out there in Chicago who I've been talking with a lot. So it's just, it's interesting. And I do, I do think there is tremendous value to learning more about these religions uh, that exist in the world, especially the big, you know, the, the big three, the Abrahamic religions, but also Buddhism. You know, entire civilizations and empires were built off of these beliefs, and you know, you have billions of people in the world that follow these things. I think it's important to learn about it because we all have to live in this, on this planet together. That's one thing we all have to really figure out and understand, especially in this country, is we all have to live together. Like it's, it, it, you know, it's like we can believe different things and not be at each other's throats because we kind of have to be because we all exist and live here. Like you can have your beliefs and I can have mine. No one has a right to initiate force against one another. But I think it's cool to learn about these things. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe that's where the bridge to understanding and, and mutual respect comes from, even if we don't share the same beliefs, it's like, okay, you have every right to yeah. pursue your, yeah. your life as you see fit, as long as you're not harming anybody. So I think that's way better than sectarian strife or civil war or, you know, or global, you know, nationalistic war, whatever it is. Uh, 
I think it's way more fun to have these conversations. Yeah, I and think ask the, questions. At, at the end of the day, we're just trying to ask questions, really. Yeah, just learn as much as we possibly can, and uh, I think that to me, that's yeah, that's, and I, that makes me happy learning totally. about the world. Yeah. Totally. And I think we'll probably, honestly, Kyle, have tons more conversations. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I hope I mean, there's guests that I want to have on. I know. Yeah, me too. People who are way more, I, uh, I have a yeah. friend who recently wrote a book about uh, Christianity, yeah. and and, so the, and he has agreed to come on. Oh, good. He's a really, a renaissance man yeah. in his own right, and, and a good friend. Yeah. So in the future, we'll definitely be having guests, but I, I want, it'd be awesome to have a Taoist on, to have a Christian theologian, to have an objectivist to, you know, all these, I think that's, uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, because like, I, yeah, absolutely, I have tons of people too, but I, because I'm, I'm a Taoist, but I'm just getting into the practices, I'm just starting to, you know, understand what, what it is You're about. a very zen like dude, that, so. that makes sense. Yeah, for sure, for you sure. really are. Um, but guys, um, we could go on for hours on this one. This is, I think we probably just scratched geez, the surface. Yeah. Basically just where we're at in terms of the ideas and the things we're studying, the f things we find interesting in our life right now. Yep. And the might change, philosophies right? that have, have, have guided us for um, a while at yeah. least. And so, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's important to just kind of put lay it out all on on the table, and you know, if you like it, you like it. You don't, you don't. Yep. Love your life. But if you enjoyed this episode, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and share. share please help please us share, 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 share. Please help us out with the algorithm. Uh, I also have. I, I'm not sure if I'm still even doing it, but I have another uh, YouTube podcast called Confessions of a Rideshare Driver mm -hmm. uh, that's available as well outside of our podcast. I have two films that you can watch streaming with limited ads on TubiTV.com for free. That's T-U-B-I-T-V.com. First film is End of Fall, which is sort of a Hitchcockian uh, thriller. Second film is called Alta Vista. It's more slice of life, but so much more. Check those out. I hope you enjoy them. This guy. You can check me out on Amazon Prime, Making the Cut, uh, Season 3, Episodes 1, 3, and 7. And we really hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you next week. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank Take you care. guys for being here. Okay. <laughs> really interesting one, Kyle. <laughs>